So, just to wrap up what we learned last year. In Pasuk Gimel, Pasuk says that the Paris Acheres stood next to the Paris, which is a detail that Pari left out in his recounting of the dream. Another difference is that the Pasuk, after it says that the Paris, Rois Hamara, consumed the Paris Yifais Hamara, the Pasuk says, Vayikatz Pari, implying his dream is over. While when he described it, he said, he said, Batavon El Kebena, Lenoi Dakibo El Kebena, right? Mm-hmm. And I forgot well, that's that. That's the Paris. Right. Right, and I forgot to say, the Pasuk says that the Paris Acheris, the Royal Samar, stood next to the Paris. That's a detail that Pari left out in his recounting, and instead he commented that he never saw such bad ones, right? So we explained that it says in Kehelas that along with Taiv comes Ra, and that's why you could never know the future. And Pari, who thought that he, everything was fine, you know, with his Ya'ar, didn't know the future, he didn't know the secret, Taiv and Ra are intertwined in a metaphysical sense um, and therefore so but the fact that the bad ones stood next to the good ones means to indicate this point mm-hmm. good and evil go together Pari didn't understand that instead he commented that he has no idea where such bad looking cows came from because male good looking cows perfect fits in with his idea of Mitzrayim but with his bad cows but really they go together right and additionally, Pare said, Pare was shocked by the fact that the, the bad cows and the, and the good cows merged, the good cows merged into the bad cows and there was no effect. So I think the pshat is, maybe you made this point, that the pshat is that Pare doesn't understand that the bad cows and the good cows are really one and the same mida, that has just two sides of it. And therefore he can't understand how could the bad cows swallow up the good cows and just that. So he had to yeah, he noticed, as it were, on some level, something that wasn't really... That was the true message of the dream, it's, it's not a big deal. But in his misunderstanding of the dream, which was A, how are they such bad cows? And B, what's going on? The bad cows are, are not changing by swallowing up the good cows. That's all part of his misunderstanding. But the real message <coughs> of the dream is that it's no, nothing schwer, but good and bad goes together. And there's no surprise here, they merge. It's all two sides of the same thing, right? Yeah. He didn't understand that it's one, it's one set of good, good, bad cows, because good, bad is really t- two. Um, we should always remember two sides of the same coin. We should always remember that if we have good, bad can come, and therefore right. we shouldn't rely on it and assume that we have a right to it. Exactly. Now this is a mistake. He's aiming at you are, and he's secure, and so on. Okay. Now the end of pasuk dalid, and then we'll read on. The end of pasuk dalid says vayikatz paroi. And then Pasuk K says Vayishan. So first I just want to point out that here it says Vayikatz Paroi Vayishan. And then the second time, after the second stream, at the end of Pasuk Zayin, it says Vayikatz Paroi Vahinei Chaloim. So we have to just note that difference. So I'm not going to say anything about that tonight. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it says Vayikatz Paroi Vayishan. So why is it important to say he woke up and he fell back asleep and had another dream? So I think the answer is because in the morning, Vatipoyem Ruchai. Right? Vatipoyem Ruchai. And part of that, if we look at... Um, Parallel parsha, which is Nebuchadnezzar in his dreams, in his Jew in Golas, who was rose to prominence by interpreting the dreams, right? Daniel. So there, in Parak Beis of Daniel, it talks about Nebuchadnezzar vatispaem ruchay, and Chazal talk about this. How come by Parak says vatipaem, and by Nebuchadnezzar says vatispaem, and there it says Oshnasa nihasalav. So his his sleep was troubled. So the point of Pari, of saying that Parak woke up and fell back asleep. It's a way of pointing out that Pari did not get a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay? So he wakes up, he falls back asleep as another dream. He didn't have a good, solid night's sleep. We already spoke about the Pasuk in Kehelas, where it talks about um, the Kehelas Parakei Pasuk Aleph, where it talks about sweet sleep, 
Shnasa Oive, whether he eats, consumes a little or, or much, yes. same thing. Vasava le Ashir in Enumaniach le Lishain. So that's Pare, who has the Sava, right? Right, so you can't see. And thinks everything is fine. But, um, right, we spoke about this Psukim at length, all, the, all those Psukim starting from the end of Parak Dalid through the Parak are all about this story. Right? Yeah. So he's Enenu Maniach Lelisha, that's his Vayikots. He wakes up, that's Enenu Maniach Lelisha. Not only does he have dreams, but because his dreams make him not be able to sleep. And that's why the Pasuk says Vayikots Vayishon. Okay. He doesn't repeat it that way, he just says, like, when he, when he reports it, Pari just Right. Says, no, he says Vayikots. He says Vayikots. And Pasuk And he doesn't say, say Vayishon because Presumably, you don't notice when you fall asleep. Yeah, you don't have to recount it, maybe, if you're saying yeah. you had a dream. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The question is even why he says Va'ikots, in terms of his recounting the dream. Well, why is it important that he woke up in the middle? It's probably more troubling that you had two dreams, that two right. weird dreams, and two different sleeps. In right, right, room. right. And of course, there's a whole focus about Yosef insisting that's really one. That so one that's. Dream, even though two sleeps. Even right. though it's two sleeps, right. Okay, we have to get to that. Pasake Va'yishon Va'yachalim Shainis. Vihine Sheva Shibolim. So on one stalk, there were seven ears, I think is the technical term. Yeah. And, okay, so just to point out, we have oilois, like Pazik Bey's, the, the parts that were oilois, and the parts oilois, and the And here too, we have oilois. Vihine sheva shibalim dakois ushtufois kodim, tsoimichois acharehen. So this is like, Acharehen in Pasuk Gimel, right? It doesn't say Oilis, it's Tzemchus. Right, it doesn't say Oilis. And there's a major, I don't know about that, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say anything about that, but that's a, definitely a, mm-hmm. yes, definitely something to think about. But I want to comment on something else. It doesn't say, in Pasuk Gimel, it talks about Vahine Sheva Paris Acherois, right? Seven other cows. Here, it doesn't say seven other stalks, one diak. There, it's a, it talks about the seven skinny cows standing next to the seven fat cows here it says nothing of the sort right there's no about ta'amoyna and most significantly and i think that's the key is that Pyro was not surprised right when he recounted the dream he didn't say i never saw such awful looking stalks right so he has he has seen these and well that's what we'll talk about that's the key to understanding the difference here just one more, let's just read Pazik Zayin. Vatavlana hashibolam hadaka is esheva hashibolam habriyas vamaleya. So here it says vatavlana as opposed to vatechalna because these are inanimate objects, so you don't use vatechila. Vayikatz pari v'hinei chaloim. Okay. Well, they're not inanimate exactly, but you're saying they're not animals. What? They're not animals. They're not animals. They're not alive. They're creatures that eat. Right. They are alive. They're plants though. Plants don't eat. Not animals. Yeah. They don't eat. Right. Okay. So now, like this. So I think it's very posh. So what are the three do you come I noted? It doesn't talk about seven other stalks. It doesn't say that they stood or that they went next to the first good ones, fat ones. And Oh, I wonder if it was on the same kana. Are you supposed to read it at the same kana? Sprouted another seven? Huh. Maybe. The first seven Maybe it's all the same kana. The second one doesn't say that they're bekana echad. The midrash learns them as not being bekana echad because they yeah? weren't. They weren't consecutive. What do you mean consecutive? The years weren't consecutive. The bad years weren't consecutive. They stopped after two years when when ya- Yaakov came to Mitzrayim. And therefore, the rois were not bekana echad. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's a midrash that says. Uh huh. So meaning that was on. They were not bekana. Okay, that's a diak here. We have to. I didn't even notice that. Okay. Okay, maybe next week we'll think about that. What's why it doesn't, doesn't say connect? Okay, so it wasn't seven other storks. It doesn't say that they went next to them, but I'm realizing now if it was on the same kone, maybe it's on Diak. Okay, and also, but most significantly, is that Pyre is not surprised, right? Mm-hmm. So I think very simply, okay, if Pyre is not surprised, that's why it doesn't say a race, and that's why it doesn't say vata amoyna. Meaning, good cows, memelo, mm-hmm. bad cows, oh, this is weird, <laughs> this is different. And, and they contrast. stood next to them. It's contrast, and is the fact that Ra and Taif come together, and Pahar doesn't understand that, right? Mm-hmm. But apparently, he understands that Shtufa is Kodim is something that Pahar has no problem processing. So in that sense, and, and 
so meaning there's a side of Zel Uma Zel Asa Lekim, Gamma Zatoyva, Gamma Zabra. What's the Pussy? I forgot the Pussy. In Kahelis. Okay, well, you remember the Pasuk, right? That is good and is evil, and, and they, they, can't, they correspond to each other. That is not the key to this dream. In other words, Pari is familiar with the fact that the Shtuf is Kodim, without the, without the secret. Now, why is that? Well, it's very obvious that Kodim, the, the Kodim, the eastern yeah, wind, right. figures very prominently in Mitzrayim, right? Yeah. In Marcus Arbe, Shmois Perek Yud, Pasuk Yud Beis, <coughs> There is a, um, I'm sorry, it's Pasuk Yud Gimel, V'Hashem Niya Gurach Kodim Ba'aretz. Right? And that's <coughs> what brought the Arba. Okay? Yeah. And then... Again, winds in general will be, will be present. Will be? Will be present. Yeah, but Ruach Kodim, which is yeah. the eastern wind, we'll see, is a, very, is a very, maybe it comes from the, brings the Hamsin in Egypt, it seems. I'm not sure I can call exactly what it is, but the Ruach Kodim we'll see in Tanakh. It'll be blowing off the desert in Egypt. Right, so is that from Egypt's east? Depends where, depends, right? It depends where in Egypt. Egypt is. Yeah, depends where Egypt is? Okay. Uh, we pretty much know that. Hey, yeah. how, and then in Parshas Bishala, yeah. right, depends which part. Then in Parshas Bishala, it says, of course, Vayet Moshe Yisiyot Ali Yom, Vayet Chayom, Vayet Chayom, Vayet Chayom, Vayet Chayom, Vayet Chayom, Vayet so Mitzrayim is quite familiar with Ruach Kodim, apparently. So therefore the Shtufa is Kodim, this, this Ruach Kodim, which brings this dry, sandy heat and affects the Tua, is something that Pari is quite familiar with and not surprised about. That's a different kind of thing. They, they ground it, the land is fertile, it's just the wind interfered. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't right. affect the cows. It doesn't affect the grass. cows because they'll find something, they eat grass, and maybe they always find something else to eat because mm -hmm. perhaps if there's a cuddle, it doesn't destroy all the tour, mm -hmm. and certainly but it probably doesn't destroy all the food, so the animals mm -hmm. can eat something else. Correct. So Parai never saw these evil cows. These are acheros. Mm -hmm. They're very different in the sense that they don't belong, but they really do, and they stand next to them, but they only do on a metaphysical sense if you know the secret of Kehalas. Mm -hmm. Parai does not know that, so he's shocked. But when it comes to the, the tour, Pare sees um, Darkois and Shtufa's Kodim, which, he's interpreting Darkois, which, one second, true. which, right, okay, true. No, but the point is what he saw, but the visual, <laughs> the visual had no, was, was not surprising to him, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm actually realizing now, are these Shibalim ever called Rois? See, the, the Paris are called Rois. Right, which is obviously a loaded word because it's a value judgment. I mean, it's not just descriptive, right? Right. And the good Shibalim are called Toivois, right, in Pasuk Hay. But I don't think the other ones are ever called Rois. No. Called Dakois, they're called Snumois, Stufois, Kodim. So that, might be, that, that I think supports this idea, right? That yeah. Pari doesn't see evil, but this is not, this is something that he understands, okay? He thinks it's time is tough, but at the same time he's familiar with the kadam and its and its destructive power. Okay. Yeah. Now the ruach kadam. Take a look at the end of our share. Okay. Fine. It's also a description. Yeah, I mean, there's different description, but it's not. It's not a not right. value. Okay. <laughs> now. Um, okay, so that's why it doesn't say acheres. Now look at Hashaya Perek, the end of Perek Yud Gimel. Where it says explicitly that the Ruach Kodim is called the Ruach Hashem. Last passage in, passage in Parakid Gimel of Eshea, it, talks, it says, Yavo Kodim Ruach Hashem mi Midbar Oile. The Yevoish Mikoiroi the Yecherav Mayone. So the Ruach Kodim ascends, comes up from the Midbar. Here we have the Pores, that were Oile Smin And there's a Ruach Kodim that comes up from the desert and it dries everything in its path. Dries the manyon, okay, yeah. which may be suggestive of the river drying up and the oilus become echad. We have all these lashon of oilus, and the ruach kadim is the ruach Hashem, and it can destroy. As the pasuk continues in Hesheya, who yish se oitzak could destroy all the all your warehouses and every all your treasures, okay. But it's the ruach of Hashem, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll learn. We'll learn if we get to. We'll get to. We'll learn some more about Hesheya parak yud gimel. So it comes out like this. Pari knows in Mitzrayim there's good cows. And there shouldn't be bad cows. 
But the Ruach Kadam, which is Hashem's wind, that he's quite aware of the fact. This is probably, he's quite aware of his weak point of the, something that could get him, right? Even without knowing that Toiv and Rago together. <coughs> Even Mitzrayim, as he understands it, is exposed to the Ruach Kadam, which is the Ruach Hashem. And in fact, that Ruach Hashem is what was Paris' downfall in the end, in the Yamsuf, right? Hashem niyad Ruach Kadam Okay? So. What? Right, but I'm saying, but that was his actual. Yeah. The end of Mitzrayim was, was, was with the Ruach Kadim. Okay? This Ruach Kadim that was the downfall of Mitzrayim is also referenced in Yeshaya Perik of Zion, according to Rashi at least. So I want to take you through Yeshaya Perik of Zion. And we shall see that there seem to be references to our Pasha. Okay, so Yeshaya Perik of Zion begins that Hashem is going to. Visit his Kharba Yakoshiva Gadol Bahazaka on the Lavyasan and the Tanin Asherbayam. Who's the Tanin Asherbayam? Says the Benazo Pare. As it says Nichazgal. Tanim What? Right, the Tanim Harovitz Basachi Oirov in the Yar, who says Li Oiv and Yasisini, and we spoke about that's Pare Oimin Ahay Yar. And that's what he's called the Tanin. Here he's called the Tanim Asherbayam. And then the Pasik talks about Yisrael is going to be like a special vineyard. Kerem Chemed, right? The, the, the Ruach Kodim, remember, destroys Oitza Kokli Chemda. And Yisrael is going to be a Kerem Chemed. Ani Hashem Noitzra Legorem Ashkeno. I will constantly water it. So Hashem is going to constantly water his Kerem Chemed. In contrast to Mitzrayim, the Tanan Hagadol, that's going to be apparently dried up. Okay? And then we have Pasuk Vav, Haboim Yashresh Yaakov, which is the understood by Chazal is referring to Bnei Yisrael coming to Mitzrayim, and if it's after of Rosh Hashemais. And then, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, then I'll go to the Pasuk about the Ruch, Ruch um, Kadim in Pasuk, uh, Pasuk Ches. But first I'm going to jump ahead where it talks about, where in Pasuk, Pasuk Tes, which says that when the harvest dries up, let it break, it will break. Which, according to Chazal, means that the Goyim, you're supposed to let them dry up and shrivel and not give them schuyas. And the Gemara Babas says two things. That you shouldn't take tzedakah from Goyim for this reason. And the Gemara also talks about Babas that the Neil should not have given an Eitzah to the to, to give him... Kids, you're not supposed to help the Goyim when they're facing downfall. Right. And the Gemara Babas quotes this Pasuk about the first Allah. The question is, is it, is it the same Allah? Is it the same Allah? Is it the same Allah? But... Bivosh Ktsiwa is this idea that when it's dried up, let it break. So, of course, Daniel, the had a dream, and Daniel gave him advice instead of letting him just collapse. Similarly, Pari had a dream, Yosef gave him advice instead of letting the Kotsir that was dry let it break. Right? He could have, Yosef could have stood by and not told Pari what the dream means and just, and just been a witness the, the downfall of its right. Which is which is per, which is very aptly described as Yivash Ketzira, because the dream was about the Shtufes Kadim, right? The dried Kotzir. Okay. Now there further it says in Yeshaya, going back to Pasuk Zion there, Hakamakas Makayi Korim Kero Haruga of Harag, which according to Rashi means that Hashem's punishment that He visited on Mitzrayim was Mida Keneged Mida. What they did to Bnei Yisrael was done back to them. He measured their saw, a saw to them like the saw that they did to Bnei Yisrael. And that's what Hashem expressed them with his Ruach HaKosha, but Yom Kodim, that Yom Kodim is Vashem Hashem Nia Ruach Kodim, right? So, what am I showing you here? That, okay, we have the Tanin, which connects our parasha, perhaps Yibosh Ketzira, the Katsir being dried up, and the idea that the dream interpreters, Daniel and Yosef, shouldn't have Come to the shouldn't have given an Eitzah and, and come to save Mitzrayim or Bavel, but yet they did. Um, and Bnei Yisrael is the one who's the Kam Chemed, who Hashem is going to constantly water. Not Mitzrayim is going to instead get the Ruach Hakasha B'Yoyim Kadim. So this this Shlufa is Kadim is foreshadowing to Parai that Hashem is Hashem can get you, right? Okay, fine. He, yeah, he, he doesn't acknowledge that, even though he acknowledges that Ruach Kadim can get him. Yeah, he doesn't acknowledge what? He doesn't acknowledge that there's good and bad. He doesn't acknowledge... No, he doesn't know. No, he thinks... Right. He, yeah, you have to forget exactly what, what he thought. Right. He thought Mitzrayim's lot is Taiv. Yeah. But 
but then there's something from Hashem. No, I, I think you know what I think it means. What? I think it means he thought his sar is is tight. And in order for anything bad to happen to me, you have to you'd have to have something made Hashem. Uh-huh. And really, we're at bad tie. If your sar is, is one size right, one size tight, because everything is one size there, something like that. And you, yes, Hashem is going to do something to you. But even before that, it's still inherently built in. Right. Then there's the side of which the, now we have saying that he owns, he controls everything. Though. He controls everything, but unless Hashem, no, he knows if Hashem, he so knows if Hashem can direct, steps in. Can what? He can the sar he can direct. Exactly. He controls everything, meaning he's the Tsar, basically. He's the Tsar and he's Taif. He knows Hashem can interact. Now, you have to figure this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to learn this better. And the fact is, Yosef insists that the dreams are one. And there's a me, I'm going to put it as a major, major difference, which we'll see. It's a positive house that makes the two mistakes, really. It's two things Pari didn't know, basically. Or. If Pari knows one and he doesn't know the other, because really they're one thing, then he doesn't know at all what they mean. No, we'll see, we'll see, we'll soon see, we'll soon see. Right. I, 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 do, I admit that this, I need help on this, like many things in life, and, um, but let's, let's see where this takes us. I do, let's see what exactly we can say about power, what he did know, what he didn't know, and yeah, think about it, figure it out. Adarab. Adarab. So basically, right, Power didn't know the idea that Ryan and Taif go together, but he did know that the Ruach, which is Hashem's, he doesn't control. Okay, now, let me show you this idea about not controlling the Ruach. You know anything about this, not controlling the Ruach? No, in Adam Shalat Baruch. Oh. Ah, where does it say this? In Kehels, Perek Ches, exactly where it should be. Let's start, just remember, the beginning of Perek Ches talks about the Chacham who knows how to be Pesher, right? And his wisdom illuminates his face, like Daniel, whose faces were illuminated by their wisdom, even though they didn't take the pass, right? Mm-hmm. Just reviewing quickly. Yeah, of course they didn't. Right? No, I'm saying because, but even you would think, right? right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> right. Both, both are true. Both are true. And then... Um, Pasuk Dal talks about not being able to tell the king what to do, and Pasuk <coughs> Hey about keeping the mitzvah. We spoke about this about the time Mashkim Sahalifim, and you don't know what's going to be, etc., etc. Right? All these things we spoke about in the time Mashkim Sahalifim, and now we go to Pasuk Ches, which says Ein Adam Shalat Baruach Lechloi Aseruach. So Shlita doesn't extend to the Ruach. You cannot lock up the wind. Remember, Yosef was locked up. Now, Pare is a shalot. Yosef is going to become the shalot, right? Yosef was shalot al Um But the Maisa, there's a limit to shiltain. You cannot rule, you don't rule the wind. The ain't shilto be hamaves. Pare, who is the shalot, also is going to die by the wind, the ruach kodim of Kriyas Yamsuf. The ain't mishlachas ba mechamo, which I think traditionally means you can't send someone else instead of you by war, but I realize I'm not sure if that's it. But if that's what it means, then it's very appropriate because Omar Pari Erdif Asigach Alek Shalot. Pari is leading the battle. Right? He's leading the charge, right? Veloyu Malat Resha Es Ba'olov. Pari has a lot of wealth, but it's Resha, and therefore he, he can't, it won't, it won't be Mamalat him. He's going to be a Rav. Why? Because of the Ruach. Because the Maisa, one thing you can't control is the Ruach. When the shlita is for evil, when man controls his fellow man and does evil to him, then we see this that he can't control the ruach and um, there's limits to your shelter. Okay? The next puzzle, like I once spoke about the Samashkim, but we weren't sure what to do with that. Samashkim, we forgot Yosef. Mm-hmm. Fine. Either way, the point is point is that okay people do evil to people so Pari is an evil shiltoin Pari shiltoin is evil and therefore um he thinks shilt- good. what he thinks he's good well yeah so what was exactly was the evil of, of Pari shiltoin it could be it could be i don't know it could be the killing of the sahamash game is shal to adam bad morality the sahar yeah. as we know i'm a big defender of the sahar and the fact is of course sahar oifim is the lechem and yet then Pari gets has troubles with his lechem so, so it could, you could be the pasuk is saying he's shalat the adam shalat adam badam l'ralo is that par is shalat on the sahar oifim mm-hmm. and does evil to the sahar oifim and therefore par is lechem he gets a, he gets a clap on the lechem it's a mak the on the lechem because he killed the sahar oifim that shows the arbitrary nature of par is rule that kill one right. keep them alive there's no difference right the lechem itself specifically what right and instead and Yosef gets the shlita on the lechem. Right. Because power is the bad shallot, so you need a good shallot. Right. Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay? <laughs> now look a little further in Pasikid Aleph in Kehalas. Asheri Nasa Pisgom Maseharah Meheroh. 
The evil things don't happen quickly. You know why they do evil? Because even though it's bad coming, it's lurking, it doesn't happen quickly. Ah, but now finally, says Yosef to Right? Yeah. I forgot. I patched up the Pasuk. But the point is that there's no time anymore. So you, Parai, who have always been become inspired by the delays and be full of your heart to do evil because things don't happen quickly, now time's up. Now okay? The right. So therefore, you, you have to stop doing, stop doing evil. Right? Stop doing, e- you're mortal, stop doing evil. Stop doing evil. And stop doing evil means give the bread over to someone who's going to do good with it, which is Yasef, the shalat, the good shalat, right? Which he does. Which he does. He does good things. Um, right? He's the good, he's the Yelad Miskin Vichachim, who's better than the Yelad Miskin Vichachim. So I can Vichsil. Okay. I just want to comment briefly on Pasuk Yud Beis. You could read Pasuk Yud, now going right to in that parak. you could read Pasuk Yud Beis and on as Parai's reflections before he met Yosef. A Chayte could do evil, hundred evil things, and Marech Loi, meaning as long as he keeps on doing it and nothing happens. Now I know, some people read the Pasuk like this, Pasuk Yud Beis, I'm just paraphrasing. I know what people say, that good things happen to those who fear God and good things won't happen to the Russian. But the fact is that the tzaddikim to which Masay Rosham happens and Rosham the tzaddikim happens, so therefore comes a hevel. That means Paris is like this. I'm doing evil and I'm getting away with it. I know this, this idea, this theory of divine um, reward and punishment for, for according to people what they deserve. But the fact is that I see that tzaddikim get what Rosham deserve and Rosham get what tzaddikim deserve. And that's because the Sahamashkim Sahar Eifim, one was killed and one lived and it was, it was completely arbitrary. So therefore, it's Hevel. That suggests that the whole idea that there's going to be divine punishment is Hevel. So therefore... Because we're Hevel anyway? Because one got, dies and one lives. no difference. Uh-huh. You're, saying that, that, you're saying that there are cases in which it's not justice. Correct. Or even when there is justice. No, therefore there's not. No, therefore maybe there's not justice. No, 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 no maybe not at all. No, that's your asking. Yeah, yeah. No, this is what Pari is saying. I'm reading Pasuk like this. Mm-hmm. He does a hundred things wrong and he gets arichos. And then ki gam ani. These people read it like this. Gam ani means I know what people say. Meaning this is like the chayta speaking. I know this this idea how, that that tovli yele that only going to be tovli really came. But no one pasuk There's a hevel nasar. I see tzaddikim get kamasa yoshanim, and therefore I think that uh, that suggests that this whole idea of the Yerela Kim getting toiv and the Russian not getting toiv is question. It's a suspect, and therefore she bachti and it's a simcha. Therefore, all I want is simcha, eat and drink. And therefore, you know why I preserve the Sahamashkim for my party? Because this is all party speaking. It's like, look, the whole thing is a joke. The whole life doesn't make sense. So it's just one big party. And well then... Play. Might as well enjoy yourself. Might as well enjoy yourself. And then look at Pasuk Design. He says, but I want to know what's going on. Now I can't sleep. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, they're not going to sleep. Because everything came off. I, I don't believe in reason. I didn't believe there's any reason to the world anymore. So therefore, I had nightmares. Right? My sleep was disturbed. But Isis called Ma'asi Elokim and I couldn't know what's happening to Achas Hashem. And I tried to find out. You can't know. And that's when he meets Yosef who says, hey, you, yes, you, you, you can't know. You're a big, because you basically were involved with the Oilam by just arbitrarily killing one and keeping the other one alive. And Taka, you, you, you're the one who's the root of all these problems. Yeah. <laughs> you made this whole problem of Hevel Ma'asi Elokim. Right. I, I see right. Right, now you have to read in Perasic Test, talks about Sinna and Ava, Perasic Test, I'm sorry, talks about Sinna and Ava, which of course is at the root of the Isis story, but that's already getting deeper, and we'll leave that for now, and I, I didn't go into that. Okay, one more thing over here, back in Perasic Test, in Perasic I'm sorry, where it talks about how to deal with the king, right? So the beginning of Perasic talks about there's no one like the Chacham, and it was the Pesha, and then it talks about, in Perasic Test, Perasic Bez, it talks about how to relate to a king. You have to listen to the king, and Alti Bahel Miponov Telech. Don't, rush away from him. Meaning, if he wants you, don't go away from him. Okay? That's the warning to the to how to act in front of a king. And don't avoid, don't resist doing something, or don't delay doing something that's distasteful or wrath. So it's alti I just want to point out that in Daniel, it says Daniel was brought to the king Bebehala. And then when Nebuchadnezzar asked him, told him to interpret his dream, which ended, which which was a message of doom for Nebuchadnezzar, so Daniel didn't want to 
interpret the dream. And the Pasuk says in, in Daniel, the Pasuk design, he was with Bahala. And the king told him, don't let the dream bother you, tell it to me. So here in Kalis, it's telling you how to act in front of a king. You're not supposed to be with Bahala. Okay? Yeah. Fine. Kind of like uh, Rishob and Pra. Uh, sorry. Yeah. What? Rishob and Pra? No, no. no. I'm talking about in front of the emperor where he was when he was singling, but he always kept kept track of everything and he knew what everyone was saying, what all the singles meant. So. Yeah. So then you're not Bahala. You don't you know just single things without knowing what the answers are, what the statements are. You have to always keep track. Uh huh. And that's why he survived. Ask him, what are you doing? So in front of a king, you have to be very yeah. exact, measured. Right. In control. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Be in control and under control. Right. Interesting. Bahala is, not, is apparently, kings don't take they kindly don't like, to Bahala. Like that's what it's possible like saying. Kehalas, and then we see him sting by Daniel, right? So the dream interpreters. Yeah. Have to think about that. Okay. Now I want to show you one, way, one place on Kehalas, which will pull it all together. This is in Paracute Aleph and Kehalas. Sean, you good for a few more minutes? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Perakit Aleph and Kehelas. Now take a look at this. And again, here I'm not going to review everything we learned. We can start from the beginning of the Perak, just to make it obvious. Shlach lach pnei hamoyim. This is Yosef's advice to Paroi. You have to invest, right? Invest the lachem. Don't consume it all at once. And maybe now it just could. Maybe we said this without pnei hamoyim. His dreams about the Yor, and he's telling him the lachem has to wait. Mm-hmm. When are you going to find it? Eight years from now. There's seven years of plenty, but you have to use the bread during the seven years of plenty also for the eighth year. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what evil is coming. Now, of course, to remind you, the parak before also was talking about Yosef, but we don't have to review this. All right, no, we don't. He doesn't know what was going on. Right. Well, no, because even after you have a dream, I say you don't know. Remember, I tell you, dreams don't tell you. Don't give you das about the future. Right. They tell you because you don't you understand why it's happening. They tell you that kacha. They give you. They make. They give you a certainty about something that there's no way you can know. Right. Right. It's not scientific knowledge, dreams, right. because in the sense meaning scientific knowledge, it, it is. Nevuah tells you. Knowledge. It's usable knowledge. It's usable knowledge. It motivates you. Yeah. It motivates you. And you could be have a certainty about it, but you can't explain it, which is a right. weird kind of certainty. So that's why I say that. That's I think the essence of a dream, as opposed to nevuah, gives you understanding. Right. Hashem or such and such, and this has to happen. It must happen. And dream is not like that. Okay. Now it talks about okay, so I'm talking about when the when the when the clouds are full of water, it empties them. When the tree falls, that's where it stays. Don't always look at the ruach; you're not going to plant if you don't always look at the clouds, or you won't harvest. Just like you don't know which direction the wind is blowing. Just like I'm saying this, let's say the, there's different ways to touch this, but I'm mixing and matching here, so you have to look at them first and how you touch this exactly. But I'm, I'm going to go with one shot. Just like you don't know the which way the wind blows, which is just like you don't know atzomim bones in the beton of a in a full of a full animal or a full person, you can't see bones. When a person eats, you can't see the bones. So it's comparing three things. You don't know which way the wind blows. You don't see bones in the Bet and Hamalaya. Mm-hmm. And you don't know the Masih Selkim was doing everything. And therefore, what? Basically, you can't just say, okay, I, I did enough. You have to keep on doing. Okay? Right. So Pirate doesn't know about Derech Haruach. That he admits to. He, does, he knows that he doesn't know Derech Haruach. He has no idea when it's going to be Ruach Kadim. And he's in big trouble. He knows his wind, yeah. and he doesn't know which way it's coming from, right. which is a, which he is aware of this problem, right? <laughs> yeah. And now he also doesn't know atzamim bevet and hamaleya, which means the sheva paris rice yeah. that consumed these these sheva paris typhus, and 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 now they're full, and yet you can't see that so you can't see anything inside them, which is shocking <laughs> to him, right? That's right. Those are the two things that Pirate doesn't know. He doesn't know which way the wind is coming from, but that's something at least that's he knows he doesn't know that, yeah. right? He knows he's at risk to the Ruach Kadim. He's shocked about not knowing Atzam and Betan Hamaleya, and the deeper message is, right. you don't know anything because you don't even know anything about the Sarim, which we said before, you don't even know anything about the you don't know the Toiv or Ra. Yeah. And therefore, what? This is Yasef's advice to him. 
Yeah. Don't think that, so the answer is just because you have seven good years, don't think that you shouldn't say, hey, let me, me plan ahead because like, you, have no, you have no idea whether the seven good years are going to suffice for them or they're going to have to be needed for the next, for the coming years. Okay? Yeah. See, so basically, the side of Taivara is what Power had to learn. That's the one thing he didn't know. The two, the, I mean, that's the one thing he, that's the one lumbus he didn't know, okay. as it were. The two things he didn't know where he didn't, as the Pasuk and Gauss puts together, but it's in a very different way. He doesn't know which way the wind is going to come from, but that's a known unknown. Right. In other words, he's aware that there's a Ruach Hashem, and, right? Yeah. And, he's, and then there's an unknown unknown, which is the Atzama Bethlehem Malaya. He didn't that, know that he didn't know this. He didn't know that there was such a thing. To right, know. right. He didn't know that there's such a thing as Atzama Bethlehem Malaya that can't be explainable. And the message is, Because Don't think there's only you have one meter that you say, oh, my meter is toiv, God is a coil. Yeah. So if you have toiv, you have Ra also. Yeah. And that's a secret. That's Atzama Bethlehem Malaya. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the two things that are, that he's that he's that he's They're really coming from this other. Well, I don't know if they're coming. That's the thing. I don't know if they're coming from the same point. They, I mean, Kels puts them together. There's two things that power is. There's two dangers that he's at risk of. One is the ruach, and one is that Atzama Bethlehem Malaya. And like Thomas said, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, which one is Pari suffering from, right? He's suffering from both. That it still leads us to that question, right? Hainu, Yosef tells him it's one dream. Really, this two hurts completely right. two different risks. One is from Hashem, one is from the side, That's whatever. Answer they're both from Hashem. They're both the same thing. You just didn't what? recognize they were both there. Yeah, okay. Then we have to think about that. I and mean, what's what is the Shavuot Hatos exactly? The Hatos is that the, that he doesn't realize that there's. In everything, there's general and there's more specific, and there's right, but then okay, right. So that was his mistake. I understand, but then, but then the fact that he was having dreams about a ruach kodem affecting him is a very different problem. Right. Well, so which one was it? Maybe that's why you. That's which why one was one, it? That's maybe that's why they won. No, maybe that's why they won drink. How's that? You can have bad years, so bad that you have that they're bad in the same way, and you think that the ruach kodem is just one kind of bad, and we have limited bad. Because that's this Ruach Kadim thing, but everything else is good. No. Same way, there's a Ruach Kadim. There's also... There's yes, also there's a Koyal. Right, a Koyal, and there's, there are parish rights. I mean, since there's Ruach Kadim from Hashem, yeah. therefore every Hashem is, does everything, and therefore any Elikiv or any power that you think you know is going to have to be part of a Koyal. Right. I mean, maybe the whole deeper lesson of Kehelis is that there's no such thing as an isolated thing. Right. Because that would be denying Hashem. Right. In a sense. Okay. Fine. Maybe, maybe that's the idea. Okay, I just want to wrap up with Hashem because I'm going to tell you something about Hashem. Um, there in Hashem Parak Yud Gimel, we have the Ruach Kadim, right? Yeah. But I want to just compare Hashem Parak Yud Gimel with Tehillim Parak Pe'alef. Tehillim Parak Pe'alef is Haninu Lelikim Zenu Haril Lelik Yaakov, right? That's um, Thursdays, right? Thursdays. Shishalim. And there it talks about Yosef going out, right? I'm time, so I say that the Eshma, and and going out of bondage, and Anochi Eshma lekechem Eretz Yisrael, Hamam Hachvi Hamaleu, Velo Yisrael Ma'amli lekoyli Yisrael Avali, Misani Hashem Yichachashu Loi Ki Pasuk Tamer Chachashin Hashem the Divine Hashem Vehi Itom Loelam Their Ace is Loelam, which means like eternal damnation. Mm-hmm. So their Ace is a case of Ra and, and internal problems. Um, while by Achilo Mechilev Chito, Mitzudash Aspea Echo, you saw get Sava. Okay, that's what it says there in a nutshell. Now, I want to point out some of those themes in Kahal in Hesher Perkud Gimel. Pasuk Dalid, Anochi Hashem Lekecha Meretz Mitzrayim. So that's very, of course, very similar to the Pasuk Anochi Hashem Lekecha Meretz Mitzrayim. Hachibich Vamaleihu. Here it says, Alakim Zalasi Lesed. Okay, and I satisfied you. Kumar Isam by Yisbau, Pasuk Vav, like it says in Tehillim. But the problem is When you have Sava, you could forget Hashem. And here it says Shechachuni. So in Tehillim it says Masani Hashem Yichachashuloi Kachash, and here it says Shakach. Okay, and of course forgetting Hashem is a big problem. And then going ahead to Tzara and Ephraim, Pasuk Yud Gimel, Ephraim is a Bein Loi Chacham Ki Ace Lo Yamoid, so he won't survive the Ace at that Ace. Okay, and then it brings the Ruach Kodim in Pasuk Tezvav. Talks about the Ruach Hashem coming up from the Midbar, right? So I want to say, putting it all together, just, so in, in, in Tehillim it talks about those who are Mekachish in Hashem, their ace is forever. And here it says, if you forget Hashem, you don't survive the ace. Mm-hmm. 
So basically, the, 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 what this suggests is like this. Yosef leaving bondage is like is a foreshadowing of Yosef Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. And when you leave Mitzrayim and you get Tzur Devash Asbiyeka, you have a danger that you're going to forget Hashem. Right? Right. And you don't want to be Shechech Hashem or Mekachesh in Hashem like they were Vayishkachehu and forgot Yosef who stands for Hashem. Because if you do, your ace is going to end up, instead of being the ace by Dvarei, which is the ace of Kates, of Geula, it's going to be Itam Lailam. And ace Lo Ya'amoy B'mish Babonim. The time for the later, the time to be born, right? Which is Geula, you won't survive. You won't survive. Which, by the way, is I think... Yeah, okay, leave it this at that. This is like saying that's the problem of Pari. Right, so, pa oh, what? That Pari doesn't know these things, doesn't recognize, and keeps refusing, and therefore he's therefore he doesn't survive. Either. Right, right, right. No, but it just occurred to me, I think you were saying well, also, right, no, he's also not surviving a birthday, because this right. is his birthday. Right, right, right. <laughs> he keeps saying that's he's, his problem. He can't, he can't sleep.